So what I've got here is a TP Link router. It's a N600 and its actual model number is TL WDR3600. And uh, I picked this up because uh, it is actually a dual band router. But unfortunately, you've just got these two antennas here at the back, and these are classed as dual band antennas, which support the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz at the same time. Now. I'm not really a big fan of dual band antennas. You can get some really good ones that work well, but they tend to be extremely expensive. And uh, these kind of antennas, you know, that they're, they're always they're an okay 2.4 gigahertz and they're an okay 5 gigahertz. Never really a good antenna. It's a bit like that old saying, a jack of all trades and a master of none. But um, this router will also run some custom firmware, OpenWRT. I'm not sure what kind of extra functionality that gives you but you have got your two USB ports on the back so you could probably run this as some sort of NAS storage device. So what I want to actually try and do with this is modify it so we can get two extra SMA connectors on the back there so I can have two dedicated 2.4 GHz antennas and two dedicated 5 GHz antennas and see if that uh, actually improves things a little bit but uh, before we actually modify that it's a really good idea just to uh, give it a test and see what those signals are like before we actually do any modification. So I'm just scanning with my uh, laptop's internal Wi-Fi card and at the moment I'm looking at the 2.4 GHz signal coming from the TP-Link router and it's um, coming in at just 60% uh, is a couple of dropouts here and there but uh, it's not a bad steady signal but it's not great either I'm sure we can improve on that. And here's the uh, 5 GHz signal, that's extremely poor, it's uh, dropping out continuously and it's not getting uh, really above 20% signal, so that is an extremely poor connection and you would not be able to connect to that to browse the internet at all, so I think we can definitely improve on this. So to actually get into this router I can't see any screws at all, it looks like it's all plastic clips holding it down, there's uh, no screw under here, normally you can feel with your finger underneath the uh, label here and uh, you can normally feel an indentation if there's uh, a Phillips screw underneath that label but there isn't so uh, plastic pry tool and work my way along the sides to uh, hopefully lift that lid off so removing the lid was relatively easy there's no screws at all it's just clips that run down the sides and the front here so just get a pry tool in at the back here and it just pulls away now TP-Link produced two different versions of this router and the only difference between the two is that there's a third antenna just here and uh, actually runs down to this unpopulated area here and that seems to have been for the uh, US market because uh, when I was looking around um, to purchase one of these all the versions that had the three antennas at the back all seemed to be US sellers and the two versions all seem to have been uh, sellers in Europe so I don't know if that's true that it was just for the US market but uh, definitely seems to be by uh, pe what people are selling on eBay. So it's a pretty straightforward layout I mean the actual coax themselves it's quite easy to actually modify and solder on here because you don't have to remove any components or anything it's just soldered on here and here and the same on this side and um, Apart from that, there's there's not a great deal to it. There's no way that I can split the two signals coming from this chip here like I did on the uh, Linksys router that I've just modified. The uh, Both signals come down the same track and actually go up the uh, coax themselves. There's no way to split them at all. So to modify this, it's quite straightforward. You've just got your coax soldered on here. You've got your centre soldered on there and you've got your ground plane, your outer braid, your coax soldered on here and uh, here this is uh, a test point from uh, the factory so they can actually test them on mass and this is not a high rose connector there's a little bit of confusion with these sometimes and uh, a lot of people think that uh, it is uh, one of these kind of connections and I have seen some uh, sellers in China selling uh, an upgrade kit for one of these um, routers and they're selling them with uh, the uh, bulkhead connectors, the SMA bulkhead connectors complete with the high rose connector connected at the end there saying that it's just a simple um, open it up and uh, actually plug in to that connector there but it's not, that's a test connector not a high rose connector and here is the unpopulated track for the uh, third 
um, antenna that uh, I was talking about that seems to have been made for the US market so it's completely unpopulated if if that was all populated with components it'd just be a simple job of soldering our coax onto here and here but uh, unfortunately it's completely unpopulated so what I intend to do with this is uh, use these two SMA bulkhead connectors here I've already crimped on some uh, coax to these you can buy these as cheap as chips on eBay already uh, crimped and everything with uh, quite a long length of coax attached it's probably the easiest way to actually do it if you don't have the tools to crimp but um, what I uh, am going to do is put one here where the uh, extra SMA connector is on the uh, US versions of this router and down here we've got a little uh, on off switch for the uh, actual wireless and there should be enough room for me to drill a hole and put the SMA connector in there so I'll have one there and one there and what I'm actually going to do is then take the other end of the coax and just simply join it on to uh, this connection here so we've got the two lengths of coax going from that one connection and the same on this side and what that will enable me to do is have two proper 5 gigahertz antennas and two proper 2.4 gigahertz antennas and I'm hoping that will um, give us a much better range and a much better signal just by having the appropriate antennas for the actual uh, frequency that's using rather than the, the uh, dual band ones that came with it. So I fitted the SMA connectors to the back here now I did also think I could uh, actually attach them here to the uh, actual lid in uh, these areas here but they would be a little bit too close to the original um, SMA connectors the original antennas and also um, if you wanted to actually get into this router it uh, would make it a little bit impractical and you could run the risk of tearing the uh, actual coax off and also have to make the coax a little bit longer but uh, this is probably the best position for them so it's best to solder the outer braid coax in place first and then you can actually manoeuvre the center core into position to solder that in second because uh, the outer braid has got more solder on there so it'll be a stronger joint. And because we've pre-tinned everything you only have to apply a little bit of heat and a little bit of solder it just makes it a lot easier. So now we just need to solder the second one in place and now that we've got the coax soldered in place for the both connections uh, we can just uh, go and pop the lid back on we can give it a test there's uh, no need to actually tie these cables down at all we can leave them just free floating like that just put the lid on top there's plenty of room inside the lid it's not going to catch on anything so as the saying goes the proof is in the pudding and if we have a look at the 2.4 gigahertz here we can see it's a marked improvement just under 90 percent so uh, I'm really pleased with that and if we have a look at the 5 gigahertz and it's just at 80% so a lot better than the 20% uh, it was before so I hope you found that video useful and it demonstrated how much uh, a signal can be improved by using a uh, proper dedicated antenna tuned to that particular frequency and at the end of the day the uh, 20% difference on the 5 gigahertz up to the 80% difference these uh, two 5 gigahertz antennas here are only very small ones they're only 2.5 dBi so uh, I could even put uh, some slightly bigger ones on there and get uh, maybe get it up to about 90% so uh, like I say I hope you enjoyed that video and you got something out of it and uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one